This video is gonna be a full walkthrough of the Garmin Approach S42 Golf Watch. This isn't gonna be my full review. If you're interested in that, then I've included a link down in the description below because I have tested this watch extensively. First of all, let's look at the golf settings. So you can see here, you've got a single button on the side there. So we're just gonna press that and it automatically gives you the main option of play golf. So you tap that there and it will search for your local satellites. Now, because I'm at home, it's not gonna find any. So I'm just gonna skip that section. And you can see here, it's come up of some of my previous local courses. So let's choose Romford Golf Course. And you have the option here to keep score or not. So let's say, yes, we're gonna keep score. You select the tees and it only gives you two options. So it's not ideal if your course has multiple tees, but there we go, we're gonna select men's for now. And it started us straight off. So here we go, you can see here at the top is the first hole, so you've got hashtag one and it's a par four. And what you've got here is the layout to the front, the middle and the back of this hole here. And you can see here, you've got a green on it as well. Now you can probably make out, if I just get that in focus, there we go. You probably make out that you've got these numbers on the outside here as well. So you can see there that there's a little red mark next to the first hole. So that's a quick way of counting round and knowing which hole you are on. On this watch here, it is a touch screen. So first of all, if we touch the screen, then it gives you a better view of what the green looks like. You can see as well, you've got a little dots at the front and the back. So that's showing you where it's giving you that front and back yardage too. And if you want to, you can then move where the flag is. So it's pretty easy to do that. And you can see there that the dots as well are moving for the front and the back. So if you know the flags at the back, you can see that you're gonna to play to roughly 355. Flags at the front on this hole, it's gonna be more like 335. To get out of that, you just press the button on the side. You're probably gonna to wanna to know where the hazards are on this watch. So what you do next is press this button at the bottom. So interestingly, you don't swipe it. That doesn't really work. You have to press that arrow button and then it brings you up with the hazards for the hole. Now on the S42, you don't get a full layout of the hole. You just get this strip view instead. And there's a few little kind of intricacies to get used to. So you can see on the left here, it tells you the front and the back of the hazard. So in this case, it's a bunker. And you can see here as well, you've got the letter D and a few dots. And then you've also got this blue line, a white line and a red line. So what you got here, you've got a button to scroll up and down. So as you start scrolling through, if we go all the way actually on here, you can see it's scrolling from D and we've gone down to A. So A is gonna be the hazard or the layup that's closest to you. So you can see here that a 200 yard layup shot means you've only got to hit it 144 yards. If we scroll up to B and a 150 yard layup, you've only got to hit it 193. C is then the 243 layup. Now D is a bunker on the right. You can see here that D is the right hand side. So D is a bunker on the right. E then is a bunker in the middle. So there's one in the middle of the fairway and it's 272 to that bunker. F is a second bunker there. So it's 293 to that bunker. And then G is a bunker 133 to the front and you can see it's on the left hand side of the hole. So that's how that works in terms of the hazards and then to get back, you just press that button there on the right. That pretty much sums it up and everything that you're gonna to wanna to know when you first start out on the course with this watch. But of course, there's plenty more options to go. So if you press the button on the right, that gives you your menu. Also quickly brings up the time as well on the watch and gives you a quick indication of the battery. So if you want to change the hole, then guess what? You press that button there and you move which hole you want. So you can scroll up or down to whichever one and then you press the tick button to confirm. But for now, let's just stay on hole number one. Next, you scroll through and you have the scorecard. So you can choose at the beginning whether or not you keep score, so I did. So you can see here at the moment, we've only just started, so there's nothing there, but that will populate as you go through on the watch. If you go back to the next option on the menu here, you've got round information. I've never really looked at this one to be honest, but if you track it, then it tells you how many steps you've taken, the distance you've walked, and how long you've been playing for. Go back to the next menu. So you can track your last shot. So there's a couple of things with this. First of all, you can press that and it will start recording it for you. So now you can say, telling you it's to, sorry, it's telling you to swing to start measuring. Or in addition, you can add a previous shot. So you can start one from a different location. Also with this watch as well, it does give you a feature that it automatically pops up on the top of the watch once you've hit your shot and started walking. Go down to the next menu option. You can see here that you've got club stats. Now, I haven't really actually turned this one on particularly, but you can track club stats with this watch. 
So you can choose what club you want to see your stats on. And then let's say, for example, you want to see your five iron. Well, fortunately, I haven't recorded any shots with this watch. We go back to the next menu option. Then we've got save location. So if you're on a specific part of a course and you want to save where you are on that hole, then you can click save that location. And then next up, we have got sunrise and sunset. Something that, to be honest, I don't really use all that much, but if you want it, it's there. On the bottom, then you've also got end round. So if you want to, you can choose to pause the round and come back to it, or you can choose to end it. That, if we just end it there, there we go, ends the round for you, pretty much done. Now what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna start another round again. Let's have a look here, there we go, go back to Romford Golf Course. Uh, keep score, yes, men's tee. Okay, because when you're out on the golf course, because we're keeping score, once you get to the green and then you walk off, this will then prompt you to enter your score and a few tracking details as well. So you enter the number of putts that you took, where your fairway shot went, if it was a par four or five, and also you enter any penalty strokes that you took. Now there's also specific club tracking that you can turn on with this watch as well. So after you hit every shot, a little gyroscope gets picked up and registers that, hey, he's just hit a shot. And then what it asks you to do is confirm which club that you hit. Now you can pair this watch with the Garmin CT10 tags and then that tracking happens automatically. But to be honest, it wasn't particularly an issue for me and I don't mind entering which club I hit after every shot because I'm interested in having those stats available to me. Now you access those stats on the Garmin app afterwards on the rounds. Once you finish, you upload all your data to your phone and that gets uploaded into the Garmin account and the cloud. And then you can see how you're tracking with each of your clubs. If you are thinking about buying this watch, then I have included any affiliate links that I've got down in the description below, along with any discount codes currently available. If you hold this menu button down on the right here, then you're gonna get some additional menus. So at the top, you can see this is where you turn the watch on and off. If you select golf settings, then you've got a few specific for your golf. So you can choose to turn scoring mode on and off. Stat tracking, as I mentioned before, you have to have that selected on. And then at the end of each hole, it will ask you to enter those details about the number of putts and your accuracy of your tee shot. Club prompt is what I mentioned as well. So if you've got that turned on, after you hit every shot, it will ask you to select which club you've hit, just to give you some additional club tracking data. You can choose your specific scoring method. So if you enter that one, you can either, either select between stroke play or stable food. Now, personally, I generally keep it on stroke play. And then you've also got handicap scoring as well. So you can choose to keep that off, or you can have your watch work out your handicap either via the local handicap or your index slope mode. Also, you can enter your average driver distance. Now you have got big numbers mode. So if you turn that one on, if you prefer, then when you go back to your menu, you can see here, rather than having the green layout, you've now got, as it says on the tin, big numbers. So it's just telling you to the flag is 343. If you touch that bit on the bottom there, then actually what you get is big numbers. It just gives you front, middle, and back. So that's really handy. Then when you press the menu button, what you can do is then actually select your hazards and layups. So unfortunately you don't get big numbers for your hazards and your layups. It just goes back to that standard menu that we showed you at the beginning. I'm just gonna hold the menu button down and go back to golf settings so we can change that back. There we go, so to turn that back off, we just press that little flicker there. And then club sensors. So as I mentioned, you can pair this with the CT10 tags, and this is the menu where you add those tags if you wanna pair them with the watch. If we just go back to the menu, you've got a do not disturb mode. Now the reason why that's on there is because you actually have the ability to pair this watch with your phone, so you can get notifications about text messages, WhatsApp messages, uh, and phone calls and things like that. You've got a lock screen mode, so it means that actually you can't accidentally push the button or anything like that. It only stays on the main screen there. What you need to do is then hold the button, gives you a little vibrate and lets you know that it's unlocked the menu there for you. If we go back down, uh, you've got a few options for different watch faces as well. Let's see what way you have to scroll. Okay, so you scroll up and down. So it's totally up to you, whatever kind of style you prefer on these watch faces. You know, it's not necessarily the most stylish watch going. That's quite a cool little digital one if you want it. But for me, I actually quite like it on this one here because it gives you the battery indication, gives you your day date and a nice easy time mode as well. So there we go, I've selected that watch face. 
If we go back to the menu again, scroll down. So again, you can see here that you can choose to disconnect your phone if you want to. You've also got a settings button. So this is now just the general settings on the watch. So you can choose to have an auto lock mode. So it always locks the watch after a certain amount of time or you can choose that the what the lock mode comes on during activity or not during activity. For me personally, I just don't bother washing it, so I keep that one on off. Now you have the backlight mode, so you can turn the backlight on and off. You can see there that that's the difference that the backlight makes. It's not the most amazing backlight, and if you actually press backlight, you can choose how bright you have it. You can see here I have it on 100%. Now that obviously the lower that you turn that backlight down, then the longer the battery is going to last. In fact, I think if you pop it up to a certain amount, if I put it on 100%, I'll normally, if you, because it was on 100% before, it hasn't, but it gives you a little warning saying 100% means the battery won't last as long. And you've got a timeout mode for the backlight as well. So you can see here that I haven't touched it for too long. Yeah, it probably gives you about five seconds until it cuts out. So you can choose to increase the length of time on the backlight. There you go, there's that setting I said before. This setting will reduce your battery life. So up to you how long you want your backlight on for. Press the menu button is back. Now you can choose to track your activity as well. So when you're linking to your phone, then it will count your number of steps and things like that. And you can add it into your health app if you choose. And again, you can track that in the Garmin app as well. We've got on the bottom here, man manage widgets. So with the widgets, there is a certain way that you can see all these random little bits. You can see the weather, your sunrise, your calendar, golf mode, steps, notifications. You can turn all of those on and off. It's totally up to you with the touch there. I'll show you how to get to them in a little bit. You've got a user profile mode. So something that I haven't really, oh, there we go. So it's just general details about me. I'm not 5'11", I'm a shade under six foot, I think. I don't work in pounds, I have no idea. That's probably too light, too heavy, no idea. Um, and which wrist you are wearing your watch on. Change your language if you want to, change your time details if you want to and the date, and then you've got units as well. So track it whether you want stuff in miles, in yards, your pace and speed in miles, your elevation in feet, your weight in pounds, kilograms, height in feet, temperature in Fahrenheit. I don't want it in Fahrenheit. We're in the UK here, we use Celsius. There we go. No idea what Fahrenheit is. If we come out of golf mode, so we're going to click the menu and we're gonna go all the way back down and we're gonna end the round there. So it gives you a summary of your round at the end of it and you can choose to save it, discard it, or as I mentioned before, pause it. And we're gonna discard this round. Yes, I would like to discard it, thank you very much. Okay, so that's not saved, so it's not gonna upload next time I connect the watch to my phone. So now I just wanted to show you the widgets as well with this watch, which I mentioned earlier in the menu. So all you do from the watch face is you swipe up, or I think you can swipe down, yep, so that will take you to one end of the widgets or the other. So if you swipe up, then it gives you quick access to your uh, weather details. So 10 degrees Celsius today, and we've got a 30% chance of rain at the moment. It's the UK, so I'm surprised it's not 100% chance. Um, you scroll through, and then you're gonna get your sunrise and sunset details. Uh, and then I believe, let's have a look. Oh yes, so sorry, that's calendar. So it's Christmas all day. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, and oh, by the way, I'm not recording this on Christmas Day. I'm not that kind of monster. I think it's, uh, you know what, I don't even know what she's saying. It's a bank holiday today. Oh, that's right, yeah, we're, it is a UK bank holiday today, so it's telling me, great, okay, we've got a bank holiday. Um, and then it gives you details of your last round that you did, so you can see the last time I used this watch was at Rodway Hill Golf Course, uh, and for some reason I just recorded it for 10 holes. And then it gives you a tracker of the steps and the calories burned, I think. Yep, so that's giving you some health tracking activity details. If you click into it, well, you can see that I haven't worn this watch much. So it's saying Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And that's giving you a count of your watch, uh, of your steps. If I tap it again, there you go, it just takes you back to that menu. And let me go back to the widgets again. Yep, so that was the steps. And then you go down to the bottom and then you have got your uh, notifications that are coming up on your watch. Now this is a little bit of a bugbear of mine with the S42 because if you're using an Apple Watch, then in terms of the notifications, you get notifications for everything. You can't really choose, okay, I only want text messages and phone calls. If any app pings up on your screen with a notification, it's gonna ping up and vibrate on the watch face. So generally, I have that turned off. What I wanna do now is just quickly show you the actual apps. And we've got here the Garmin Golf app. So you can see here your scorecards from your previous rounds. You can go into the specific details, so then you can go into 
various rounds and go, okay, what, what did I get on each of the rounds here? And specifically, you can then go into each of the holes and you can have a look here. And then you can edit as well the details. So if it's missed a shot, you can add them in or you can be a little bit more accurate with each of these. So that's a cool, interesting feature. And then if you then go, I believe, into more, so you've got some random settings down here in the menu. And this is where you can select which clubs are in your bag. So then the watch knows which ones to ask you. If you haven't got a free wood in the bag, then you might as well take it out of the menu rather than ask you every time, did you hit your free wood? But if we go back here, what I wanna show you actually, performance stats. This is then where you can get some interesting information on how your golf is going. Now, this isn't my current handicap because I haven't used the watch for all of my rounds. So it's just th let me know what it thinks my handicap is from every time I use these. Then you've got some shots gained information here. So we're talking about your drive, your approach, your chipping and your putting. Um, you can say whether or not you're improving or not or whether you're staying the same or getting worse. Gives you information on your recoveries there. So you can see that, uh, how you recover um, and how your bunker play is. And then also it gives you some rankings against, well, let me bring up there, there we go. It gives you some rankings uh, what your percentile is in terms of everyone or people with a similar handicap to you. Now, what you can also do is click into view details and you can get a lot more details on uh, some of the sections. So you can see here with my driving, it gives you your kind of all the shots that you've hit with your driver and your yardages. So you can see here like your max, so my max was 274 using this watch. Also hit a few couple of tops down here that went a little over 10 yards um, and you can kind of see your dispersion left and right as well and it gives you some percentages of your accuracy if you go across to your approach again it's giving you some approach uh, accuracy information telling you whether you miss left right short or long as you can see here like an average golfer i'm missing 49 percent of my approach shots short so i should be clubbing up a lot more and then you can actually make that specific to whatever club it is that you've got. So that's all my clubs. But if you only want to look at how accurate you are with, I don't know, a seven iron or something like that, you just choose which clubs you want to see and then just apply it and it will give you all the information just for that one club. Now, if you want specific details on your chipping uh, and your putting, then I've got it here because I've got CT10 tags linked to another club. But if you actually look and you haven't got the CT10 tags, then this information is locked to you. It says, go buy the CT10 tags. From the main watch screen, if you press the menu button, you can see you've got these four colored buttons down the bottom as well. So you select that and you've got a few options for additional things you can do with this watch aside from golf. So you can see here that you can choose a GPS activity. So you've got to wait for the GPS to kick in, unfortunately. So through the power of editing, we're just going to skip ahead to once that GPS has been found. There we go. So it's picked it up. Uh, press button to start and stop. And the thing is, I don't know what activity it's picking up. So I guess it's picking up whatever activity you're doing, whether it's running or walking or out on the bike. It's giving you distance and your speed as well. It's kind of interesting. I've stopped it there, so we don't want to do that anymore. And I'm guessing, oh, I've pressed the button again. You can probably hear the big hefty vibrate that this watch is giving me. So I'm going to press the watch to stop it, and then it gives you a summary, and then you can select done down the bottom. Do I want to save that? No, not particularly. Do I want to discard it? Yeah, we're not going to bother with that one. And then also you've got a stopwatch. So if you want to use a stopwatch, it's pretty easy. Start. Oh, press button to start and stop. I did press the button to start and stop. Let's try it again. Okay, so it's just a second hand. It doesn't go down to a tenth of a second or anything like that. Uh, let's go back to the menus. Here we go. Uh, you've also got a timer. Again, if you want to set a timer on it, you can do. We've got an alarm clock if you want to put one on. You can find your phone if you want. You've also at the bottom got this true swing mode. This again is helping you in terms of improving your golf game. It's something you can work on down the range, but you need an additional device connected to the watch. If you're looking for a full review of this watch, including not only the positives, but the negatives about using this watch on and off the course, then I've included my full review right here. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews and videos.